This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Nexus 5X, made by LG for Google. Plenty of branding on the back right there. You can see the Nexus, you can see the LG. This is the more affordable of the two Nexus phones for 2015. Google heard those of us who said, my gosh, a giant phablet is not necessarily what we want, nor is something that's very expensive. And you know, Nexus devices have been all sorts of things. They've been the, the flagship when nobody was making a flagship, then the affordable when nobody was making the affordable. Now we have plenty of each and they're making one of each. This is the more affordable one. It's not dirt cheap, but the specs on it are quite good. This starts at $379. It's an unlocked phone with LTE, not just GSM this time though. This works on all four big carriers, including Sprint and Verizon. In fact, we have a Verizon SIM in this, and it's got a host of LTE bands, so it's going to work with the smaller carriers, it's going to work overseas, you get the idea. Look at the specs page, there's too many bands to even list. So good times, we have LTE in here, and I think it's a pretty attractive design. Uh, they have marketing names for these things, let's just call this one white. It looks pretty nice, you can get in ice, which is a kind of pale mint green or carbon, which is black, probably the most boring. Snapdragon 808 six core CPU inside, just like the LG G4, two gigs of RAM, and a 12.3 megapixel rear camera. That's the same camera that's also on the more expensive Nexus 6P. So we're not slumming here for our $379. I'm going to look at it now. So here it is, the more affordable of Google's two Nexus phones for late 2015, the Nexus 5X. 5.2 inch IPS display there with Gorilla Glass 3. This is 1920 by 1080 resolution. No crazy QHD resolution there. That's okay by me. We're talking 423 PPI pixel density. That is very high. Unless you have microscopes for eyes, you're not going to be discerning individual pixels. It's also pleasing and colorful in the you know LG sort of way. They never like over amp the colors. Some manufacturers do. Of course, it's not super AMOLED, so you're not going to get those super AMOLED zinging colors. But the blacks are pretty black on this. The whites are certainly nice and white, and it gets very bright. It's easily viewable outdoors. Viewing angles are not bad on it at all. Of course, our studio lights are going to cause some reflections there, but pretty good. It's not like, oh my goodness, it's a budget display by any means. It's, it's nice to look at. It's also fast and it's responsive. This is Android 6.0 Marshmallow on board. What does that bring you? Uh, the UI, you know, Google's smart, just like all mobile manufacturers. <laughs> they usually don't do vast changes to the UI to confuse the heck out of you. So it works pretty much the same. You've got your drop down notifications, your quick access here, actually quite a lot for Google. And I like that. It's a good selection of things that you might want to actually quickly access right there. Well, it gives you the OS level support for the fingerprint scanner. That's what that is on the back. Why is it on the back? So in theory, you, you're going to scan that fingerprint in, and when you pick up the phone, you pull it out of your pocket even. As long as the phone's off and you rest your finger right there, you'll feel a little vibrate, and it's going to recognize your fingerprint, and very quickly works as well as the iPhone 6S. In that respect, then the Samsung Galaxy S6, it's a zippy thing, built into the OS support for that. We also have Android Doze, which is basically a feature that tries to manage your applications when your phone is sleeping so they don't all hog up a whole lot of battery power. So a little bit more draconian management of your apps, more freezing them in the background, that sort of thing. I think most people will probably prefer that over watching your battery drain overnight, as sometimes happens with Android phones. This does have better standby times as a result without the usual, oh, look, 10% is gone when you wake up in the morning. Hmm, where did that go? You also get a context sensitive kind of Google Now function here. So say you're on a web page, this is our homepage right here, Mobile Tech Review, the mobile version of it. And if you press and rest your finger on the home button, it tries to find context sensitive things. It's not doing a good job. For some reason, it's chosen to scan an ad that is on the page instead of any content. Previously, it would pick up random things like um, Huawei because we have a Huawei product featured on the home page and all that sort of thing. It's a little bit hit or miss, honestly, but I'm sure Google will improve that over time. And it's kind of a neat idea. If you're searching for restaurants and you, you press and hold there, you might get more relevant restaurant information for restaurants nearby, that sort of thing. Of course, knowing Google, it's also going to be a way to try to sell you on stuff. Either folks who are paying to be listed and products that are paying to be listed, that sort of thing. Lastly, app permissions have gotten less confusing and a bit more granular. And at times, instead of seeing a whole list of things that this app wants access to when you download it from the Google Play Store, 
it won't show you all those, but when the app actually requests to use that feature, well, say it's like Instagram and it wants to use your camera, then it's going to say, hey, I'd like to use your camera because, well, I'm Instagram and you probably want to post photos that you took with your camera phone, right? You get the idea. So those are the improvements in Marshmallow, which is the operating system on this. As always, Nexus phones get the operating system first, and it is a clean Android build. No enhancements of any other sort, just straight Android on board. It's quick and it's responsive. This is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 808 CPU. That's the same one used in the LG G4. Nobody ever called that phone slow. Also doesn't have the getting toasty on the back issue that some of the Snapdragon 810s do, those being a little bit faster. This is clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. It's a hexa-core CPU, that means six cores. Two gigs of RAM. Base model has 16 gigs of internal storage. That's a 379 model. 429 nets you 32 gigs of storage. And it's up to you to figure out how much storage you need there. There is no micro SD card slot. Google still hates removable storage, so mm -mm, no. You do have a USB-C port right here, aka USB 3.1. So <laughs> we don't have an adapter yet to actually test to see if this supports USB host. As a result, this is kind of a pain in the neck. And funny thing is, the only thing we have in-house to plug this into is a 12-inch MacBook. Go figure. Mm. Anyway, they, sh they, they ship it with a USB-C to USB-C cable. You can buy an adapter separately, and you're probably going to want to. And the charger itself has a USB-C port on it, so when you plug it in to charge it, you could use a different charger if you wanted to, if you had a different cable. It supports USB-C fast charging, by the way, and it is really quick to charge. 2700 milliamp battery, speaking of such things here, no wireless charging, so if you had one of the older Nexus phones that supported wireless charging, that accessory will not do you any good here. 2700 milliamps is a pretty good capacity for a 1080p screen, 5.2 inch size, and the 808 CPU in here, and it lasts a day on a charge. I thought maybe it would be like one of those phones that gives you about two hours of extra screen on time or something, but no, it's not. Typically, I'd say it's around the five to six hour screen on time so far in our test. So decent battery life, not earth shattering battery life, not terrible battery life either. In terms of comfort, it is comfortable to hold in part because it's a 5.2 inch phone. It's not one of those giant fabulous, but the curves really help. And I think it's nicely designed. Some people have made fun of it, but I think the nice curves on the edges, the two-tone look, if you get it in white or the ice color, looks good. The, the, the camera hump, the curve there, the way it's integrated, it looks very modern. To me, this does not look too cheeseball, polycarbonate everywhere on the body. Of course, if you get the black one, it's going to be a little bit more staid looking. And for a size comparison, this is the iPhone 6S and Obviously, our Nexus right here, so you can see it is a bit bigger. It's 5.2 inches, but it's not exactly petite. In fact, we're going to bring in LG G4 next, which has a considerably larger display, well, reasonably larger, and the size difference isn't vast exactly there either, so just a little bit. Of course, it's a pretty slim device. The LG gets pretty chunky around the middle there, so you get the idea. And of course, compared to our 6s plus a phablet it, it is a lot smaller than a phablet -y phone if you want a phablet -y phone by the way there is the nexus 6p built by huawei we'll be reviewing that separately that one has a significantly larger display higher end specs and a bigger price tag to match now though experientially this is a fast feeling phone except for the camera app which is the camera app's fault not the phone's fault it doesn't do quite as well in benchmarks as we expect. In fact, the LG G4 runs on the same exact CPU. Granted, it has a little more RAM, but it, obviously this is not tuned for max performance, but it's not terrible either. It's just a little bit under the LG G4 in terms of results. For Quadrant, it scored 19,022. For the mid-range price, this is fine. For something that competes with the Moto X Peer, it's fine. On Tutu, 54,562. Geekbench 3, single core, 1120, multi-core, 3,354. 3D Mark Storm Unlimited, 14,497. That translates into a phone that's more than powerful enough for most of us. Honestly, phones today are <laughs> turning into supercomputers in your pocket. And unless you're really pushing that, especially with you know demanding 3D games, it might just be overkill, just saying. On the back here, notice we have a two-tone LED flash. We've got our laser autofocus going on over here. 
no optical image stabilization. Again, same camera that you get in the more expensive Nexus 6P. On the front, there is a 5 megapixel selfie camera. Now let's take a look at camera application. Haha, see, I just unlocked that using my fingers. Isn't that cool? Camera application. I don't know what Google's problem is. They always just come out with. Okay, there we go. It's just thinking and freezing for a minute, too. They, they always just don't do a good job with the camera software. So in the case of this one, the UI isn't as weird. We, we got rid of that circular UI, thankfully, and it does take give you a little tutorial to say swipe sideways to switch between photo and video, and that's a clever enough idea. Big shutter button, 4x3 aspect ratio going on over here. Flash control, you got your HDR, timer mode, and here you can choose between some features like a photo spear, panorama, lens blur. Lens blur does work, but it's a little bit overkill. We're going to throw some sample photos in for you and a sample video that was recorded at 4K and downsampled to 1080p for including in our video here. Settings right there, resolution, location, you know, not too much going on there in terms of settings. The camera is just a little slow sometimes. I don't know what it is. Uh, Occasionally it can be really quick, other times it just pauses and stutters. And if you actually use that background blur feature, oh my goodness, it just takes a long time to process it. If you want to get to your gallery, it's right over here. If you want to switch front and rear cameras, it's over there. Switching to video mode, just like that. And you can record 1080 and 4K video with this phone. Now the good news is is that it's a good camera sensor and the camera app may be a little bulky but it, it does a good job of rendering a photo and particularly in low light because this has oversized pixels for the sensor it does a very good job. Of, we're going to throw in a picture of our kitty cat in a fairly dark room that looks really really surprisingly good with detail and color and nuance and all that sort of thing. So it does a good job, and, and 4K video is also nice and sharp too. Just keep your hands stable to avoid shake, and you'll like it. So, you know, Nexus cameras have never been <laughs> a good thing, and this has to be, for sure, the best Nexus camera that we've seen so far, and it's not bad. And you can always use third-party camera apps. So, so far out of the gate, I've tried Camera 360 and a few others, and none of them are working quite ideally. Like, Camera 360 is recording everything upside down, no matter which way I turn the phone. It's doing kind of a mirror image thing, but uh, you'll be able to use third party eventually. Sample 4K video taken with the Nexus 5X. Now, Optical stabilization here, so we'll see how bouncy this is. Call quality on the phone, by the way, is quite good. Data speeds are going to depend on your carrier, generally speaking. It, it's, the, the phone has an LTE Cat 6 radio, so you're going to get good speeds there. Now, we're using a Verizon SIM, and funny enough, whenever it rains, our Verizon coverage just really kind of bombs. So we're not getting the, the greatest data speeds right now on Verizon here, but still it's plenty enough to drive YouTube right here, and you can hear the built-in speaker. Single speaker. The other one is the earpiece speaker up here. It's just the bottom good one. Good times. A lot of neat products coming down the pipeline, but right now we're going to take a first look at Microsoft Surface Book and Microsoft Surface Pro for the latest Microsoft tablets that are hitting for the late fall holiday shopping. Unsurprisingly, max volume gets a little bit harsh, but it's not terrible either. It's okay for a phone. It's certainly fine for a $379 phone, and honestly, there's I, I like this a lot. It does have competition for the Moto X Pure Edition, though, which is a really, once you customize it, a beautiful phone with options like leather and wood backs and all that sort of thing. So it really depends. And, you know, the, the Moto X is also get a fairly clean version of Android and pretty quick OS updates. But with the Nexus, you know, you're always going to be the first. If that matters to you, then, then that would lean you towards the Nexus, certainly. But it's a tough race there. But all in all, it, this has been a year when a lot of mid-range compelling unlocked phones have popped out. And... This one still holds its own pretty nicely, and of course, it's the official Google sanctioned device, which is always a plus. So that's the Nexus 5X. It's available now, and actually, I think it's shipping. It's still available if you want it, which is a good thing. Sometimes they sell out when these things are first introduced. Again, it starts at $379, 50 bucks more if you want to double your storage, and it's a really nice phone. If you're looking for something that's not too huge, it's very comfortable in the hand. 
it has a good camera, particularly in low light. The camera software, Google, why do you always screw that up? Anyway, I'm sure third party camera apps are gonna start working better on this. It's zippy enough, you get clean Android and you'll be one of the first people to get Android 6.0 Marshmallow. And there's that fingerprint scanner on the back that actually really works pretty well. Cool stuff. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.